Hey everyone, welcome to the Tom's Hardware Podcast for May 17th, 2022. As always, I'm Editor in Chief, Abram P- Tom's Hardware Editor in Chief, Abram Pilch. I'm joined by Associate Editor Les Pounder. Uh, Ash Hill should be um, expecting her to drop in soon, and as well as our special guest, uh, Amish. I don't know if he's Amish or Amish uh, Schultze. Uh, who uh, is a who is using Raspberry Pi for cosplay? But and as always, we're taking your questions live in the chat. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, Les, what have you uh, what have you been up to this week? Oh, plenty, lots of different things this week. But I want to show you something really cool. So this is you know, it's the Pi Cast, isn't it? We all know it's the Pi Cast. I'm coming here for Raspberry Pi stuff, but you know, raspberries are not the only fruit. There are lots more things out there that are interesting that we can mess around with. And I got one the other day in the post. So I'm going to go to the Obey Cam so you can see what it is. It's this. It's the Cadis Vim 4. Now, I think it's Cadis, I'm not too sure on the pronunciation. This is an SBC and it's pretty much the same size as a Raspberry Pi. Apologies, there's no banana for scale in this case. Um, it's the same size roughly as a Raspberry Pi, but it's a little bit different in that it's got a lot more power. It's got an octa core, so eight CPU cores and eight gig of RAM, and also 32 gig. Oh, there we go, let's get the right one 32 gig of EMMC storage. So it's a powerful board. Now, that power comes at a price we're spending about 200 to 220 dollars at the moment. It came out roughly a week ago, this board. But you're getting a lot of board for your money. So on the screen now are some basic specs. So you can see the CPU, so it's not to core, it's an ARM Cortex A73, the four of the cores, and the other four are the A53 ARM Cortex. So 2.2 and 2 gig respectively. We've got up to 8K um, 24 frames per second decoder, really good. And we've got some cracking bits of uh, connectivity as well. Looking around the board, we've got USB 3, just one socket, but that's fine. Gigabit LAN, HDMI up to, I think it's 8K output. USB-C, so we can have power and connectivity there. USB 2, because we always need a USB 2 port. We've got um, connections for micro SD, voltage input, sorry, voltage in is um, USB-C, sorry. Looking at the wrong screen there. But on the underside of the board, we've got an M.2 slot, PCIe. So we can actually attach to this a PCIe um, graphics, uh, graphics card, SSD. Okay, worse flustered tonight. Okay. So I'm going to go to our camera again so you can see. I flip this board over. There is a slot for an NVMe there. But you'll notice the orientation of the slot. It's not going this way to put the drive nice and neat on top. It comes this way, away from the board. So you need to get an adapter. Now, luckily, this is for a VIM 3, which I picked up on Amazon the other day, pretty cheap, about about £15. This connects onto there and gives me an NVMe 2280 up to drive there, slot, and another slot for a 4G um, card. So I've got connectivity. And all this power is kept in check with a heat sinking fan you can see it's quite a meaty heat sinking fan it does get a bit warm but it's okay the fan hasn't come on just yet when it comes on it's got three speed settings low medium and high so as you can probably guess when it's on high it screams it's quite noisy and the breeze from it is fantastic be handy in the summer but this is a lot of board for a lot of money but it's good fun so then i go to screen capture and this is live from that board, and yes, it does say Wednesday because I've not changed the time yet. We're running Ubuntu 22.04 at the moment, so the latest Ubuntu. So I can do all the usual things. I can use uh, BPI top to check the system stats. We can see all eight of the cores. We can see the 8 gig of RAM. We can see the 32 gig of MMC. And it's all just happily moving along. Currently running at 2.1 gigahertz. Really cool. And it behaves and feels like, I'll say a low-end desktop, to be fair. 
it's a lot faster than Raspberry Pi 4, but it isn't like, you know, a desktop experience yet. You could get by with this all day. It will play YouTube 1080p, no problem whatsoever. Very few drop frames. I played a video last week for 40 minutes, and I had roughly 1% drop frames in 40 minutes. Completely brilliant, that. I'll accept that all day long. On a Pi at the same rate, I'm going to be dropping frames quite a lot at 1080p. Drop it on 720p, different story. It works fine, no problem there. So I can do YouTube playback. I can go and surf the web. I can do work on it. I can use it with Arduino to program them. I can do Python code. I could turn it into a server if I wanted. Or I can just do whatever I want. It's just a desktop, really. So Kevin asks, is the 40-pin header compatible with Raspberry Pi pin arrangement? That I have not tested yet. I need to double check on that. Looking at the header, I'm going to have a guess at no, looking at it. I need to do a proper check through to see what pinouts are for this board. I will be testing that. I'm also searching for some sort of Python library to access it, something like RPI GPIO or GPIO D, some pin, uh, pin factories make it work. In the, pa the paperwork for this, it does say you can use a GPIO from the terminal. There's an old way of doing that with the uh, Pi GPIO, was it? Something like that. So it was done in the early days of the Pi Con, it's called now. But you can control it directly from Bash. So you can do that with this. But how well it works, I don't know yet. That test is still to be done. What I'm going to show you now is something quite cool. Now, about four months ago, Raspberry Pi announced that you can now install your Raspberry Pi by just plugging in a micro SD card and it goes off the internet and does a, an in, a internet installation for you. This has got something similar, but it's just a, a little bit more, well, fancy, I'll say. It doesn't look fancy. It certainly is a lot fancier. So I'm just going to close this down. And I'm going to press the reset button on the board so you can see color bars. And I'm pressing the function button now. So releasing the reset button and holding function. This is going to load up, there's a fan if you heard it, this is going to load up a specialist menu of built-in board, that almost like a BIOS in a way. Let's give it a second to load. I'm still holding the function button. Oh, I've no, missed it. It is slightly tricky to get onto this. But while it's doing this, I'll tell you about something else. On the other side of the board is something a little bit different for an SBC. We've got HDMI out. We've also got HDMI in. We can capture HDMI feeds directly to this piece of kit. That I've not tested yet. I'll have to install something like OBS to get it to work. But I'm very interested to get it to work because it could be a really nice capture device. So if you just plug onto a network. Now, this is the curse of the live demo, everyone. It is not doing what it should be doing for me. We've all been in this situation, haven't we? On the YouTube video, and it's just stopped working. Try it one more time. No, that's not working again. That's unfortunate. But we've got the um, OOWOW interface, which is, yeah, go back to me, um, the OOWOW interface, it's like, um, basically like a BIOS, but in there I can update a list of available um, OSs, and at the moment it's Ubuntu 2204 with um, the GNOME desktop, and it is the server version, and there's also a version of, um, what's it called, Android, uh, Android 11, which I can download straight to the device I don't need to put in any micro sd cards or anything like that it just downloads into the ram expands into the ram then copies itself to the emmc card i've built into this reboot and away we go it installs the download on my connection i've got decent um, internet connectivity about 200 meg i've got at home it downloads and installs everything in less than five minutes the actual installation from ram to the EMMC of Ubuntu 2204 is 72 seconds. 
I timed it three times, 72 seconds each time. That is amazing. Wow. And I've got a fully usable Ubuntu desktop ready to go. So I'm going to have some fun with this because it feels like a more beefier Raspberry Pi, if that's a, a, something to say. It seems like it, this could be sort of a bridge between an SBC and a desktop that isn't just a standard route of it's got an Intel Celeron chip in there and it's got an Arduino 18 mega chip in there. This is something that's of its own and it could be, well, it could be a bit of greatness, this, bit, this board. So uh, our guest uh, says he is in the backstage section, but I actually don't see him there. I think um, maybe you did we possibly send him the wrong link? I sincerely hope not. Um, okay. Les will send, uh, send you the right link. Um, well, send you the, the backstage link again. It's different from the YouTube link or the uh, Facebook link or anything like that. So, because otherwise it would show up, at, uh, he would show up as someone we could add. Um, so let's see if we can get, um, get him on because we'd love to talk. Oh, no, that's oh. you. That's less again. <laughs> You're testing it. Um, anyway live problems so um oh maybe we sent him the one for the last week because it's definitely not ended um hmm. hmm interesting well um let's see Dun, dun, dun. Um, so we yeah, are that's, that's trying a to, link. That's unusual. We are trying to get um, get him in. <laughs> uh, uh, said ended in the corner. So weird. Okay. Um, well, let's maybe <laughs> maybe amish try logging out and closing the browser and coming back again or maybe i don't know yeah that's i just weird... sent the link again that was the link i just clicked in and that's that's wicked it's the invite link oh yay hey <laughs> Good to, good to oh, see yeah. you. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Can you hear hey. me all right? Hello. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got a lot of better feedback, like a delayed bit of feedback to your audio. Uh, the feedback was me. I had the YouTube uh, page open also to see what was going on. I just closed it. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us for, uh, live live from your car. So, uh, so you do some amazing cosplay work. Can you tell everyone about yourself? Uh, wow. Yeah. This is a, a great picture of the, uh, a great picture of your Galactus hat and your Galactus mask. Well, to be fair, the Galactus helmet is owned by nineties uh, tattoo legend, David Waugh. And Dave is a huge Marvel fan and he's my tattoo artist. He's done all of my work. And he said, Hey, I'm going to this uh, comic con. I know you work for Marvel putting LEDs and stuff. Can you come put some LEDs in my helmet? And I was like, absolutely. And then I went up and I saw it and I was like, he had built in the one picture, you'll see there's a little camera on the front of fifties Kodak camera. And I said, Hey, we're going to plant a little computer in this helmet and we're going to stream it in the convention center. And I'm going to mount a raspberry Pi with a monitor on the back of your helmet. And he's like, I don't know what any of that means. Can you do it? And I was like, absolutely, I would love to. Uh, but before that, I've had Raspberry Pis since they came out. I'm somewhere between a nerd and a geek. Uh, neek? Nah. But uh, 
So I've always been around it. I've had, you know, I've been around since Timex Sinclairs, TI 994As, Commodore 64s. I learned electronics from the Forrest yeah. Mims books, you know, getting started in electronics. So this is always something I've been interested in. And the Raspberry Pi, I, I love the idea. I love the initial concept. Let's get computing power to people that can't afford big computers. Let's make it easy. And then to see what all of us tinkers and makers have done with it is the amazing part. They're making synthesizers with it. They're using it. Um, we use the Raspberry Pi on Spider-Man for lighting control. You know, there was one spot where we just couldn't get our usual equipment to it. Yeah. And, you know, we got the mounted up and use the DMX 512 uh, hat for it. And then, oh. you know, we could send DMX commands to it and stuff. So it's been pretty cool. I'm glad to see where it's going. That and all the other similar development boards, but I've only used the Pi so far. That's uh, great. So you, so your day job is doing is doing oh. special effects for movies or doing props. I am I, for 25 years. I've been making movies, and my uh, I am a fixtures technician. And a fixture is in the movie. If you're watching any movie, any mm -hmm. light that you see in the movie, sconces, headlights, chandeliers, um, Star Trek, all those panels and stuff like that. The yeah. fixtures electricians are the ones that wire those. They put in the LEDs. They make sure that no lights flicker. <coughs> Pardon. And... Uh, and then we come up and we solve problems within that of lighting that's on camera is what I personally do. That's great. So, so in your work, you end up using Raspberry Pi a lot? Not, not so much yet. I, I keep mm -hmm. looking for places to use it. Uh, previously, I'm sorry, I got to take a drink. <laughs> Uh, pardon me. Previously, the first time I used it, I was working on a low budget movie that they had a scene that was in a police bullpen, you know, around a bunch mm -hmm. of offices. The sergeant gives his remarks. Everybody cheers and goes and catches criminals. But on all the desks, they had computers and they wanted them to, uh, you know, come on and be working computers. So I took eight Raspberry Pis. I ghosted the same image to all of them. We did a, a police wallpaper. I did some icons that look like, uh, you know, just different things that you could, the police would look up. And then I had one icon that would open up to a green screen and they could go ahead on that green screen and put video and stuff like that. I ran a server, a Raspberry Pi server, so I could feed the videos on there as they was looking at them and stuff like that. So that was the first time I used it actually on camera and in a practical use as computers. Uh, the next time I used them, I was actually working in the paint shop on a movie uh, or on a TV show, a TV show called Netflix Mindhunter. And in the paint shop, you have a lot of equipment and people that go everywhere. There's like 40 or 50 painters and, you know, tons of all this equipment. So I was a uh, utility foreman. So it was my job to keep track of the painters and all the equipment. So I took a Raspberry Pi and I built it into a paint bucket and we had it when you came in in the morning, you would go ahead and touch your name. And that's how I knew you were there. I had a little log in set up. And then whenever we sent equipment, I, I uh, built an RFID uh, chip reader into it. And I put little RFID tags on everything and I would create a database. When something went out the door, you swipe it against the paint can. It registers. You tell me there was a button so you could tell me what location you were going to and then anytime from my phone I could pull it up I could tell you who's here working who's where working and where you know that pink air compressor was you know mm -hmm. and another time I try to use it as much as possible because I really think it's an invaluable and cheap tool um, another time I used it I was a fixtures foreman and I set it up in kiosk mode on a big TV and I ran DAC board off of it attached to our wow. Google calendar. And then when you came in, you could see what we were shooting this week, what stage we were shooting it on. And then I have uh, two to-do lists, a to-do list and a needed list. 
And I had it set up so the guys could go on their phone and they could update, oh, to do, I did this. Or if they had to make a note, oh, light 252 in stage three, we need to get on that, you know, immediately. So I set it up easy. Not everybody's techie like us. Some people just want to come to work and, you know, screw light bulbs together and stuff. You know, so I wanted to make it so everybody would participate. And the Raspberry Pi is, you know, there's so many things you can do with it that it's simple enough for everybody to be able to use. You know? So have you, it's, so I think it's cool, so cool you worked on Mindhunter because I, I loved that show. It was so sad when, when it was canceled. Yeah, for the, sure. A lot of great people in there. Of course, Raspberry Pi, you could never see it on the air because that show takes place in like the 70s and early 80s, or at least so far it did. So you'd have to do quite a time jump to to see yeah. or, to, to see it on air. Do you ever have to create, uh, whether you're using Raspberry Pi or not, sort of fake electronics panels or like control centers for like sci-fi type of stuff? All the time. What well, do you they, use for that? Well, I mean, d depending on what it is and what the... I work... I work more with the production designer on these things than the chief lighting technician, the gaffer, because um, all my stuff is on camera. And for those things, it's just matching what the designer has in their mind and giving them as much as I can. Like if they came to me with like, a, you know, like I mentioned Star Trek, a Star Trek console, the chair, the captain's chair. You know, mm -hmm. so I would work with them to see what kind of lighting do they want the lighting to be seen through the material that the chair is made of, you know, if it's diffusion or if they want the light to be bright and on screen, do they want LEDs? Do they want incandescence? You know, cause it's not just LEDs that we work with. It's anything that lights up. It can be seen on camera. Yeah. So all the, about the bulk of it and those things are LEDs. And then we figure it out, and there's a little bit of math with LEDs because every LED has to have a resistor to get it because they'll burn out really fast, and, you know, stuff like that. But it, it's usually per the production designer, what can I do to accommodate them? And I always want to help them reach their vision. I am a paintbrush in his bucket of paint, you know. Uh, he's, he's smacking me around, and I'm just trying to get the paint on the board the way he wants it. Uh, so do you have to use any type of controller board to control those lights? If, like if you were creating a captain's chair or something that has to yes. light up, how do you, how do you make the controller for that? Right. So in that instance, um, what we will do is there's definitely uh, industry specific uh, encoders, we call them um, for LEDs. The biggest company is Lightyear. And we use a lot of their, almost 100% their equipment and their yeah. LEDs and stuff because they have the systems. I can, if I do the chair, I'll, uh, all the LEDs will come back to encoders. The encoders are multi-channel, as little as two channels up to 24 channels. So I could do 24 individual LEDs if I wanted. And then that encoder is a little box, like about the size of your phone. That plugs into a network that is either going to be DMX 512, and these this is a lighting protocol. It's an industry standard, or yeah. there's a couple other ArtNet and etc. So those once they're into the network, they all go back to a main computer, the lighting control board, just like at a, your favorite concert if you go see Kiss or something, and all the lights are gone. Well, we use that same board in film, but we use it just in a, in a different way, you know, to control the, the console or the captain's chair or whatever. And that guy, he'll have it pre-programmed. He'll have it already set. If we're, we're at alert, we're at battle stations, there's these certain red lights go off. He'll have a queue set up, so battle stations, he'll hit that, and then a certain lights go off. Then when it's calmed down, okay, we took damage. All The whole bridge is dim now because we're damaged. We don't have the power. He'll have another queue that he'll hit where it'll bring up certain uh, lights that are, you know, the bridge, no power. We're on generator power, you know, et cetera, like that. But it's all computerized. Wow. Really, cool. really cool. So do you end up doing a lot of cosplay or is this sort of the first time you've been involved with it? I have never, ever done cosplay in my life. Now I'm a comic book fan. 
but DC, oddly enough, since I almost always work on Marvel. I hope Marvel Security isn't watching. I love Marvel. Um, I, I, worked on, I worked on Batman and a couple other things like that. But um, you just never know. Um, it is, I, you know, I'm sorry. What was your question? <laughs> I mean, do you, do you, so I guess you, this is the first time that you've worked on a costume. Oh, yes. Yes. So for cosplay, I had, went, I live in Atlanta, uh, where, you know, one of the biggest production centers in uh, America. And I was in a band in Baltimore from when I lived there. And my, the guy that did my tattoos, he called and he said, he's, he's doing this, but I do it. And I came up and I'd never been to a comic con as cool as I think you know, a lot of comics are and stuff. And I love the art. And he said, so you're going to dress up, right? And I'm like, I'm not dressing up. You're dressing up. And uh, he says, no, you got to go, man. You got to dress up. And I thought about it. And I thought, I don't even know who I would want to be. You know, Cause I'm a big, I'm a 300 pounds, six foot guy. How many, am I going to be the tick? I mean, I, who am I going to be here? So uh, we're sitting in his office and I'm working on it. And he goes, you could be fat Thor. And I'm like, fat thor and i was like then i thought about it and i was like damn i got the wig pardon my language then i got the wig and i went out and got the fat thor stuff and i went to this comic con and i was kind of you know anxious about it because i'm not that kind of person to dress up like that yeah. and at the line in the front people were yelling out the big lebowski and i was like no no fat thor <laughs> <laughs> So it was kind of funny. Um, there's uh, my Instagram is at Amish Jim, and there's some pictures of it on there if anybody is interested in looking. But I thoroughly embraced it. I got at the end of the Comic Con, they do a picture with everybody on the steps, and they put like DC on one side, Marvel on the other, all the Thor's picture, all the Spider Man. And it was fun to be involved with that and get up and sit in with them and all their pictures and stuff. So I would do it again. I will say that it was a lot of fun. The Comic Con was a lot of fun. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I I should. I mean, maybe you're aware of this being in Atlanta, but the best convention like that, the best cosplay convention is in Atlanta, and that's Dragon Con on yes, yes. Labor I'm Day going weekend. To it next time. Uh, it's definitely on my list. I uh, before I had kids, I went there like three times. It, uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, I've driven through it, and, uh, well, it's kind of funny. I, I drove – it was going on while we were shooting Spider-Man No Way Home, and there was a Spider-Man driving a gul uh, golf cart around, you know, picking up trash and stuff, you know, one of the volunteers. And I was sitting in traffic, and he was waving everybody in traffic, and I wound down my window, and I yelled, Peter Parker is Spider-Man! And then I wound my window up, and I drove off, and he got off, and he did this little dance and everything. It was pretty funny. Uh, yeah, those uh, those are hysterical. So uh, Mark Antoine Chabot says, I made a survey a few years ago about cosplayers at Montreal Comic-Con. I presented as a panel. It was very interesting. At the time, the ratio was 70% homemade and 30% bought. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's generally thought of as uncool to have something that is totally, totally bought yeah. in the cosplay circles. Yeah, and the electronics part as well. Uh, Adafruit, I've got a load of uh, accessories now devoted to cosplaying. There's a special version of, what's it called now, the dark trinkets that they have. And it's developed for building your own cosplay weaponry with lights. It's amazing what you can do with such, you know, a limited microcontroller. Yeah. I actually went on Adafruit site and I, uh, I bought a bunch of LEDs and pixels and stuff like that from them, uh, from her rather. And uh, I didn't really, I didn't have enough time to really do it. I wanted to put some pixel stuff that rotated and that mm -hmm. I could control from my phone as he was doing stuff. So that, you know, I wanted to be able to have a little bit of lighting control, but I just didn't have enough time. That'll all be on version two for next year. <laughs> oh, awesome. So what yeah. did you use for power? Like, what did, what did you do for battery? So I used two power supplies. <clears throat> um, for the Raspberry Pi, I just used a USB battery bank. And it's routed through his costume and in his pocket. And then for all the LEDs, I use a 12-volt RC car uh, battery pack 
and I ran that the same way. So there was two different power supplies. That way I didn't have to worry about, you know, building a step down or, you know, anything else like that. Just yeah. make it simple. Yeah. I mean, it, it can be, uh, I don't know about you, but I find it can be tough to find a really good USB battery that is not too big, but also has enough. It also can give you at least three amps. Yeah. No, this one worked good. I went with Anchor. They're a pretty good bear brand. Yeah. Uh, I've got a bunch of them. Um, we use them all the time for little drops, you know, at work and stuff. Although most of our stuff is at 12 volts. But when we have the smaller stuff, we use the anchors. Have you used an R any RP2040 boards yet? I have not. I have not. I'm not even, to be honest, I don't, I'm not even sure what they do. If you, ah. what they do. Well, that is something I think you will definitely want to check out because... Uh, you know, if you like, if you're just doing simple lighting things, uh, controlling light lights or sensors, then you can do it on much lower power without the overhead because it's it's sort of like you know you have the Pico right, which is a four dollar right. board, yep. and it you can program it in Python or you can program it in in C, and it, it has no operating system, so it just runs whatever the program is. Yes you know no 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 boot up and much low much lower power and then you can get versions uh with the same chip that'll that have wireless or different pen layouts or things like that right, so, that's awesome. I, so i'm definitely gonna look that up and check it out so that's cool. definitely something you should i feel like you would get a lot a lot out of right oh hey one other also, note. I'm, uh, I'm sorry one other note that I wanted to make sure that I wanted to say about building the Galactus helmet, mm -hmm. when I actually installed the Pi and everything, I used the article on Tom's hardware about streaming from a Raspberry Pi. Now, uh, I'm not mentioning that because I'm here with you guys, but it was funny <laughs> when uh, I think her name was Ash, when she started talking to me, I was like, yeah, let me see where I got that information. And as I checked my history, it was from a Tom's Hardware article, and I based all my code off of what you guys, what Tom's had provided. Awesome! So Thank you cool. very much. Yeah. Thanks. we I mean, we uh, we aim to help, right? I mean, oh, that's, that's awesome. uh, where yeah. uh, that's why we put these things out there. So it's really uh, rewarding no, no. to and, see. And it I encouraged think... me to finally learn a little more Python. You know, I've been Ooh. going through the uh, the book. What is it? Automate uh, something stuff. Oh, how to make your how to automate the boring stuff with Python. Yes, yeah. So I've been casually reading that, but when I went to do that, it was like, oh, I'm going to write my first Python code here, you know. So that was pretty exciting for me too, to be honest. Yeah, uh, that's that's great. Uh, so yeah, I've got that book as well. Oh, Kevin mentions there are some great dedicated boards that use RP twenty forty, like the Servo twenty forty or Plasma twenty forty. Uh, for servo servos and RGB point. LED strips, yeah, yeah, those are great. I'm going to check it out. RP2040. That's yeah, I mean that's that's the that's the chip, that's the CPU that Raspberry Pi makes for them. And then there's like anyone can make a board out of them. So there was a bunch of Adafruit ones, right, and Moroni right. ones, yeah. and then the first party one is the Pico. But uh, what what one thing that is real cool with it for it too is if you have an LED matrix, uh, you can then get a board where you can do you know either was a 64 by 32 or 64 by yeah. 64 or even I think 75 or even up to four of them together i think so right you, so if you had to do like some type of an led display it's uh probably it's i mean i know how to do those with pi with a regular pi but i think there's less overhead plus another little tidbit Right now, of course, for everyone watching, is it's a lot easier to get your hands on an RP twenty forty board than to get your hands on a on a full fledged Raspberry Pi because those are uh, <laughs> right. those those are um, a little bit hard to come by. Gold um, dust. Yeah, yeah. I just looked to get. I gifted uh, a couple people some, and I've gifted. I've probably given six to ten Raspberry Pis away to people or suggested them to people. And a friend of mine is a lighting guy too. He's a fixtures foreman also. And I, he's like, you keep talking about this Raspberry Pi. And I said, I'm just going to buy you one. So I got him one and his best boy <laughs> one is middle management. And uh, I don't know if they've ever used them. I hope they did. I got the can of kits that had everything. You know, oh, that's nice. That's a, 
That's a nice yeah. gift. I was too cheap for that. When uh, <laughs> the first the first year I was editor, I, I'll, I'll leave folks with this. The first year I was editor, but this is an idea for folks looking for their thinking about their holiday gifts now in April uh, or or birthday gifts. When I was in uh, the first year, I was editor in chief of Tom's Hardware. I wanted people to. I don't know if it's the first year, or the second year. I wanted people to everyone on the staff to have who didn't have one to have a pie. So I bought Raspberry Pi Zero Ws for for folks, and then I just put a. I installed the Raspberry Pi OS on it, and I put like a little video message to each person on the desktop. But then I gave it to them, and I said, "You have to boot this up." In order to see what my message to you was so <laughs> you know but i didn't give them all the, the you know i didn't i didn't give them a whole can of kit or anything it's just the yeah. by, by zero well, w i knew if i didn't give him everything to do it he would never do it so but i guess he didn't do it anyway yeah <laughs> yeah uh, i so, almost thought about asking for it back if he wasn't going to use it because i'll give it to somebody else that'll use so it. yeah that that is uh that is that is sad <laughs> I think you got to give incentive. Maybe put something interesting on the desktop. Yeah, no, you're right. For them, and then yeah. they can't. You know, hey, listen, there might be something interesting there, you, but you got to turn it on. Yeah. Speaking of interesting stuff, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. These are amazing right. stories you Definitely. have, and it's just I'm so glad that you got some uh, some value from. Uh, I think this was Les's article. So. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. It's such an honor and a privilege to have you on. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, so uh, as always, we are here at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 p.m. UK time on Tuesdays. And we hope to see everybody next week. Thank you all so much. And we will talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you.